I'm Bishop John Harvey Taylor of the Episcopal Diocese of Los Angeles. Virtually invisible, not only in our lives, but increasingly in the news, are tens of thousands of asylees in an unjust and not well overseen or policed detention system nationwide. And our partners in the Diocese of Los Angeles are continuing to look for ways to collaborate on behalf of the gospel of Jesus Christ on behalf of those most at need among us. And in our diocese, a partnership is formed among servants and preachers and prophets of the gospel to person by person, individual by individual, find shelter for asylees and detainees. We have been able to participate in a rehousing or a transition program. And so we're taking it as a great honor that we can not only serve our neighbors with a food program, but now we can use our empty classrooms and our, our giant kitchen to make people welcome here. They're able to uh, enrich our congregation while they're here. It's been very wonderful for our members to meet them and to talk with them and to share in their stories. What she suffered before, be careful, it's still, it's still, she still suffers right now. For she wants them to know that she came over here to, for help. We don't come over here to take nothing from nobody. We just want to uh, uh, be better and come in here and work. She appreciates me, Linda. They open the doors for us to be safe and have a place to stay. And we appreciate you very much. We do. <laughs> First off, we, we have the rooms, and we're able to clean them out, put beds in, furnish them with uh, what they need. And we even provided a place where they can meet and use a computer, and a small kitchen upstairs. You know, I briefly talked with two of them. Okay. Uh, I can't talk about it, it was devastating. Their stories are so real and so, so heart-wrenching that you can, you can hardly understand how they can be, still be people, and still be loving people, and still be able to laugh. So. God has brought me here to Linda and to the Church of God, which are God's people, and I think this is the best family I belong to. Currently, there are so many people in uh, detention centers, probably by the thousands. But then you have the unaccompanied minors who, up to recently, were locked up not only in the cages and uh, also horrific conditions, were placed in hotels without proper supervision and proper care. One of the ways that congregations can help is a project that we created that we call a Shelter in Place Immigration Freedom Project. A lot of these uh, immigrants in detention center, they could actually be released if they had a house, a place, a shelter where they could arrive to, uh, somebody to provide an address for them. Uh, one of the factors that the judge or the immigration officer considers for the release is do they have an address, a home to. And when you're an asylum seeker and refugees, they don't have no families, they don't have no friends. Uh, right after they fled their countries, either because of violence, uh, extreme poverty, or other issues. These congregations could possibly have a space in their building that they could open up that space uh, to provide housing for someone to come and live in their congregation. So I'm, I'm really grateful to the LA Episcopal Diocese, to, uh, uh, to Iris. You guys have been compelled to walk in that space of suffering, to walk in that space of compassion of connecting to those who many of these policies of this administration have become indifference to, that they're disconnected from the humanity of immigrants, from their suffering, and that these uh, policies do have no sense of compassion and, uh, and justice. Setting aside our fears and our divisions and our suspicion and welcoming our neighbor as we would a member of our own family. 
Thank you for bringing these four to be in our family. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.